My name is Max Spring. I work for Cisco. And um, I'm going to talk about um, BPMN workflows in Jenkins. Uh, with my presentation, hopefully I can attract a few users who try out uh, uh, the Jenko plugin and uh, give me some feedback. And maybe there is also some uh, people who would like to contribute uh, some code or help uh, on the plugin. I'm going to talk about um, BPMN, uh, what it is, and uh, the activity project. Um, I'm going to demo how to set up uh, the Jenko plugin and how to use it. And uh, I will talk about uh, the plugin internals. And then uh, I will talk about where I want to take all of this. So wh what's the problem we are trying to solve here? Uh, the problem is uh, job orchestration. Uh, we've heard earlier uh, that uh, there is many attempts to uh, solve this problem. Uh, the basic idea behind the job orchestration is you have a bunch of jobs and you want to put them into some relation. You want to have some logic behind how they execute. There is uh, quite a couple of uh, existing mechanisms to do orchestration. I mean, we are all familiar with the built-in upstream downstream mechanism. Um, there is things like the join plugin and the locks and latches plugins, which uh, uh, control the uh, parallel execution of uh, jobs. Um, things like the Jules plugin is actually quite interesting, although it's uh, deprecated, it uh, doesn't seem to be under active development. But it's interesting in the sense that it uses uh, Eclipse as a graphical editor. Um, there is the build flow plugin, uh, which uh, uses a DSL to describe the um, uh, uh, orchestration of jobs. And there, there is more. Now, there is uh, BPMN, uh, the uh, business process model and notation. Uh, graphically, there is a lot of similarity with uh, UML activity diagrams. Uh, before the version 2.0 of the BPMN standard, uh, BPMN was mostly used by business analysts to describe workflows and then hand over the diagrams to um, software developers to implement them. With uh, BPMN 2.0, which was introduced early last year, the interesting thing is uh, well-defined execution semantics has been added. So one can now uh, take a um, BPMN diagram uh, and actually have an engine execute on it. A few concepts in BPMN which uh, matter uh, within this uh, presentation here. So um, BPMN talks about process. Um, I use the term workflow in the workflow definition essentially. A process instance is nothing else than a, if you will, a running workflow. Although the notion of workflows running is, is not quite accurate, it's actually a more a, states and changes in the states. And then um, the task, this is the individual steps within a workflow, typically expressed graphically through these boxes. Uh, important uh, BPMN constructs are this uh, well, start and an end event. Um, script task um, would allow you to define uh, uh, an arbitrary script which executes the uh, current implementation I use uh, uh, supports uh, Groovy and uh, JavaScript. Interesting thing here is um, if, even if there is two script tasks uh, put into parallel, there is uh, no real concurrency because the uh, workflow engine will uh, execute only one at a time. The user task is really interesting uh, because it um, allows to involve um, actual uh, human a human actor, if a human need to do something, uh, a user task would be used in the workflow. And then there's the Jenkins task, which I have added to the um, uh, activity workflow uh, set of tasks. And it, well, it, it's been used to invoke a Jenkins job. And a Jenkins task will uh, remain active until that job is uh, finished. There is a uh, different ways to um, uh, control the, the well, to express the control flow. So the parallel gateway, um, very intuitively, well, these two tasks become active at the same time, and um, only once both have uh, been completed, 
um, the control flow will continue after that. Now, since this is here um, uh, Jenkins task being used uh, as the example, so if you refer to the same Jenkins job, um, it would not run in parallel, uh, so the workflow would just wait until the first uh, job runs, second job runs, and then uh, the workflow continues until both finished. The exclusive gateway uh, can be used to just pick one uh, path. Uh, one typically um, uh, adds a condition. Um, here, uh, what we see is just the label. Uh, internally, one can have a, a, a custom expression. And then uh, uh, only the one, the path which uh, evaluates to true, where the condition evaluates to true is being chosen. A more complex workflow we see here where um, we see uh, three so-called lanes. Um, one would use them to um, have um, uh, maybe ownership uh, uh, across various teams. So in this example, I was just assuming we have a development team, an infrastructure team, and a QA team. And uh, so the idea is the development team would kick off a workflow which would build a server image with everything, uh, I mean, all the tests running, and uh, could be, of course, even multiple jobs. Once that is finished, uh, a user task is um, activated, which is in the realm of the infrastructure team. And the assumption here in this example is that, well, the infrastructure team has to prepare, manually prepare a VM for this uh, server image to be deployed on. It's not good. I mean, it should be automated. But reality here is it has to be done manually. So the infrastructure team takes the time, and at some point, um, they may have finished that. They manually declare this task to be completed. Um, now the, um, um, another Jenkins task uh, activates a Jenkins job to deploy this image which we have built earlier onto the VM. Um, once that is finished, and the, uh, another user task comes into the picture where uh, the QA team now needs to inspect that server instance. And uh, once they are done and uh, they, they declare this, uh, this task is completed and they have put a success or failure into the task context, so depending on the, on the um, uh, success or failure, uh, uh, we continue, in the failure case, we continue to the, um, we release the VM through a, um, an email task, which just sends an email to, in this case, the infrastructure team and say, oh, we no longer need your VM. In the case the uh, QA team found success, um, we hand over to another user task in the development uh, area. Um, now, let's say the, um, development team sits together and makes a final decision whether they want to go uh, or, or, uh, uh, or not uh, for, uh, with the publishing of the server image. Here then finally, uh, in the case they decide for a go, um, a um, script task then um, does the magic to publish the server image and then uh, lets the uh, QA team via this um, email task know that we no longer need this uh, VM. Uh, interesting thing here on the uh, first user task, there is a, a timeout event defined. So let's just assume um, the uh, QA team doesn't come up within three days to prepare a VM. Uh, we basically abort this whole thing. So what I want to show here is this um, integration of um, automated uh, uh, actions of uh, Jenkins doing something, integration with um, user tasks where uh, uh, human beings need to do something. This is what uh, BPMN uh, is, uh, uh, really shines at and um, uh, with the uh, Jenko plugin which uh, I'll talk more about, uh, I think we have a pretty good integration of these two worlds. So um, the great thing about uh, BPMN is, well, first it's a standard. Uh, and also, it's uh, geared towards non-software developers, so you can have um, other people uh, defining workflows, um, modifying workflows, and so forth. And as I already said, there is uh, constructs uh, with, uh, for the interaction with uh, uh, other systems, other actors, which can be persons, actual humans, or other systems. So there's um, things like the um, uh, a web service task, which uh, nicely interacts with a web service. Uh, the graphical notation, I think, is quite powerful. There is existing tooling. 
uh, which we can uh, uh, use right away. And the um, uh, underlying XML representation of, um, uh, of BPMN is pretty well documented. And there is uh, activity. Um, it's an open source project, and they provide um, a BPMN 2.0 workflow engine. It's all implemented in Java. They also have um, a web-based uh, workflow management uh, system uh, where um, a user can go to a web page and see oh, what user tasks are active, are pending. Um, I can grab that user task and do something on that. They provide a workflow editor. Um, and there's, there's two flavors of the workflow editor. Uh, the one, the activity designer, is an Eclipse plugin. And that's the one I'm using here. And um, the, uh, there's the web-based activity modeler, which is no longer under active development. And uh, um, the activity designer is also extensible. Or one can relatively easily add um, new task types into it. And that's what I have done. Unfortunately, the extensions for the designer don't work for the uh, modeler. I, I've been using, um, I've been working on integrating activity and uh, Jenkins in the past. Uh, that was part of a larger commit automation effort. And uh, we were using Jenkins as a execution engine. Activity, the activity workflow engine was sitting in an OSGI um, container in Apache service mix. and. Uh, um, we were using the Jenkins channel mechanism to communicate from the um, service mix to Jenkins, which, by the way, that channel mechanism I can highly recommend as a, as a way to programmatically do something with uh, Jenkins. It's a lot easier than the, uh, the REST API. In particular, if you want to add more features, it's uh, more powerful, actually. So uh, now there's this Jenko plugin, which um, is... Um, the result of this earlier effort where, where I thought, well, it would be actually cool to have a separate, uh, a, a self-contained Jenkins plugin, which uh, carries the um, uh, activity workflow engine, and it makes it really easy to uh, use workflow within Jenkins. The current release, uh, uh, the zero version, means it's still uh, not uh, production ready, but it's um, now in a, in a shape where you can play with it. The emphasis on the uh, two, uh, 0 0.2 version was to make it easy to get the workflow editor um, working. Um, it uh, Obviously, the Jenko plugin, it um, carries the uh, engine itself. We are using the uh, uh, activity designer uh, in, in Eclipse, but it's bundled with Jenko itself. And also, interestingly, um, we are serving out this um, uh, through the Jenkins update site plugin. <clears throat> uh, in case you are familiar with Eclipse, um, uh, you update Eclipse through update sites. Um, and this Jenkins update site uh, uh, plugin, Jenkins plugin, was the result of, um, uh, I, I, um, Koski was helping me and uh, I was telling him about uh, the idea of uh, exposing an update site. And he came up with this plugin to generalize this uh, so that if multiple Jenkins plugins want to carry Eclipse artifacts, only one update site URL have to be, has to be exposed. Um, I'm using the uh, a Git repository within Jenkins to share the workflow instances. I should, well, the workflow definition files, not the instances. And um, uh, there's also, uh, Koski helped me on this. Um, uh, he came up with this uh, Git server plugin, Git server Jenkins plugin. Um, and it allows nicely to version control these workflows. Okay, installation of a plugin, uh, we all know how to do this. So I'm now doing a little demo. I have here um, uh, uh, basically an empty Jenkins instance, and uh, um, I um, installed the Jenko plugin already. So as a first step, uh, Maybe I just uh, create a first job, and uh, because one can use the Jenko plugin uh, quite easily already. So you, we have the, the, a new job, and there is a build step, the BPMN workflow build step. Here I can refer to a workflow. Let's say I call this uh, first uh, WF, and um, it doesn't exist. 
So no big deal. Uh, if a workflow definition does not exist, a new one will be created automatically. So let's save this. And uh, let's build it. Uh, watch the uh, console. And what we can see now is we can see now output uh, from uh, this uh, first WF workflow. Now let's look at this workflow in actuality. So um, what I would do as a first step in Eclipse, um, install uh, the uh, the uh, the Jenko um, update site, which comes from which comes from Jenkins itself. So there is um, in Jenkins now this Eclipse update site uh, link, and I can use this uh, URL. Go back to Eclipse. So. Uh, there is now a couple of uh, three things. Um, the um, um, activity designer itself, Graffiti is a library which uh, the designer uses, and then um, the Jenko add-ons to all of this. Uh, select them all. Now Eclipse is um, uh, determining what else it needs to install. It's uh, reaching out, okay, so now all of this we want, we accept the uh, license agreement, and then uh, the actual installation takes place. This is a one-time step you would need to do uh, the very first time. Once you have done this, uh, you would reuse that very same Eclipse instance over and over again. So now, it's, uh, it's almost there. So now we can restart uh, Eclipse uh, and uh, have the Jenko plugin, the Jenko Eclipse plugin installed. And um, we can now open um, a Git repository coming from Jenkins, which contains the workflow repository. So um, we import, we use um, git projects, and uh, we want to import a URI. Now here, going back to Jenkins, where we get this URI from, there is in this Jenko link uh, instructions how to access that uh, Git repository coming from uh, Jenkins. I use this SSH URI because this allows me to push back changes. Put this in here. Next. It's uh, seeing, uh, Eclipse is seeing that uh, SSH server the first time because it's running on a random port, uh, once Jenkins came up the first time, it's uh, picking a port. Um, this is where uh, the uh, clone gets put. Okay, this is now the workflow project inside this uh, uh, Git repository, and uh, here we go. So we have now here under the diagrams folder, we have this BPMN file, and uh, this is that simple workflow which was automatically created by Jenko, by the Jenko Jenkins plugin. We can see now a little bit this um, activity designer in action. So we see on the right hand side the so-called palette where we can see all the various uh, BPMN constructs, here the graphical area, and down here in the property section we see details uh, about the selected element. So the script task here, uh, um, we are doing some groovy code. Let's just modify this. And 
and uh, let's save that. And now we push this back. This is a, uh, a regular commit and and push, I mean it's a git uh, clone, right? So we push it back and now let's go back to Jenkins and uh, let's start this job again and see what happens. So the first job, build it now. And yay, we see here this additional change in that uh, script task. So there, now there's even more. So let's add a Jenkins task to this workflow. And let's wire this up. So we put this, I mean the layout is here not, not, not the greatest. Um, the Jenkins task now comes after that script task and in the configuration down there we put uh, the name of the job. So let's name this called by WF, should be the, the, the job which uh, we want to execute as part of this. Save this and uh, commit it and push it. Okay, now back to Jenkins. Now since uh, we are referring to a new job um, with the name of um, called by What happened? I guess I got into some debugging stuff. Anybody knows how I can best uh, exit out of this quickly? Or just this here, okay. Um, let's create this new job uh, called by WF. And uh, Let's just do some uh, some silly uh, some silly stuff and let it sleep for ten seconds so we can see something. Okay, let me bring up um, two um, windows so we can follow both. Uh, We can see the um, executors here as well as we can see when we, uh, no, the console log of that. So the uh, first job started again. It, uh, the script task is executing and now here um, the call by WF is getting in queued and now it's executing. It's doing something for 10 seconds. Comes back and uh, everything is finished now. Okay. So I skipped these slides. They were kind of just the. Um, basically, the slides which shows what 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 we just did. Okay. So um, in terms of execution, that might be, uh, maybe was a little bit ex um, confusing, so a little um, UML uh, sequence diagram shows what happened. Uh, we have this first job doing something, uh, a Jenkins step uh, uh, executes, which is uh, the, the workflow step. Um, this kicks a, uh, an activity process, a workflow process, which then um, executes the script task after that. Um, the Jenkins task executes, which in turn was then the launched by WF uh, job uh, executing this one. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes. So the question was whether we can make this conditional. Yes, absolutely. Um, you could uh, put um, you were you the. Um, 
what what I showed earlier with the um, you can combine this into a um, where was that um, into an exclusive gateway uh, and then I mean whatever condition you want to can put on uh, whether a task should execute or not. Can we can we hold the questions to the end, please? And uh, uh, Okay. Okay. So uh, now uh, on to some implementation details. So what what has um, I like to distinguish two modes uh, of execution with BPMN. One which I call a script mode, uh, which we just saw, and the other is a workflow mode. In script mode, um, the workflow is essentially a single build step within a Jenkins uh, job, and by that it occupies an executor because the job or ex uh, occupies an, ex an executor. There is no real persistency. Um, the uh, workflow state is kept in an in-memory database, uh, when you shut down uh, Jenkins, that state, of course, is lost. Um, these um, uh, are typically short running, and with short running, I mean uh, minutes, hours, maybe days, but uh, not longer, actually. And then there is the workflow mode, uh, which we have not yet implemented. Um, we are thinking of adding a, um, an explicit uh, job type uh, called workflow. So when you create a new job, you would say, oh, I want a workflow. Um, no executor would be uh, used because there is actually nothing executing in that sense. And the workflow state is uh, persisted in an external database. All of this um, uh, functionality is there. This is what the activity uh, 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 workflow engine provides. Uh, you could use this for really long running workflows. Imagine you, ha you hand over uh, th this complex workflow I showed earlier. Imagine. Um, uh, the, the, the guy who makes the decision uh, to go or not to go, uh, it, it was on PTO and two weeks um, on, on vacation and uh, two weeks come, uh, go, uh, pass until he comes back. There's no problem for a workflow engine because that state just keeps uh, uh, persisted in the database accordingly. So this is uh, meant with really long running uh, um, uh, workflows. And this interaction with other systems um, is there also uh, quite key. The, uh, the Jenkins plugin, um, it uh, comes with the uh, activity workflow engine and it comes also with um, the Jenko update site, which then goes into Eclipse. Um, the, uh, the Jenko IDE config is that this additional um, modification, which carries also the Jenko designer extension, which is an extension to the activity designer. So this um, Jenkins task, uh, which we saw in the palette in the editor that is um, uh, packaged with the Jenko designer. And um, you install it into Eclipse and for curious reasons, um, that designer will end up under your home directory lib. This has something to do with the way how the activity designer wants to see extensions. At runtime, uh, I want to emphasize this, this is uh, two separate machines. You have your CI server, you have your admin workstation, this is where you run your Eclipse. Um, the admin uses this setup to um, uh, read and write um, uh, workflows, the workflow um, um, uh, repository, uh, which gets served out uh, by the Git server plugin. Um, it uses JGit. Um, that gets stored uh, in the conf a hierarchy of Jenkins under a new directory, Jenko repository. Um, Jenko holds a, uh, um, a checkout of that uh, in, in this uh, area and uh, by basically doing uh, a git reset hard, every time a push gets, um, uh, gets pushed into that repository so that the, um, this directory hierarchy always reflects um, the latest uh, state. And this is where um, the workflow engine then gets its um, uh, workflow files from the workflow definitions. And it uses an in-memory database. When uh, making use of the, an external database, 
there is then the option of using these other activity tools like the Activity Explorer where you would have other users uh, picking up uh, uh, user tasks and uh, working on them and uh, uh, declaring them as complete so that then uh, the workflow engine here inside Jenkins uh, could continue. I just want to glance a little bit um, over the, um, the code. Um, this is uh, the, the Jenko builder uh, interacts with the um, uh, workflow engine by uh, essentially um, uh, using a deployment builder and then um, deploying this uh, workflow and then uh, uh, having a process definition. Uh, the process definition process is essentially at this point um, the active or about to become active workflow and uh, the context uh, in terms of variables of this um, uh, workflow is being constructed here. Things like um, the, the build number and the, uh, the, the build parent uh, is being put into that and all of this is then finally here started down here. The, the activity API is also really good um, uh, uh, documented and it's, it's relatively straightforward. Um, the builder then uh, at the end, and this is not that great at the moment, uh, through polling, it figures out when um, the workflow is actually finished. Um, there is room for improvement, of course. The Jenkins task, um, so here this gives an idea um, how to extend the, uh, uh, the palette in the editor. Um, uh, one has to do, a, a, to extend from a, from a the abstract custom service task, and then um, uh, via annotation you define some um, uh, the attributes which end, which become fields in the in the editor, then uh, some little meta, uh, metadata where this um, extension should show up and the name and which uh, icon is supposed to be used. It's relatively easy. Um, important here, um, each de uh, a task in in designer has a um, a delegate class. The delegate class is the one which is being used at uh, runtime then. So we have here an idea about how the runtime looks like. When a Jenkins task becomes active, uh, the engine calls the execute method and uh, passes on a full context, uh, the execution context. And uh, what I'm doing here now is essentially grabbing the job name, you know, this called by WF, and um, uh, looking whether there is such a uh, job and if it exists uh, down here, uh, scheduling it, um, uh, running it. In case all of these fail, then what happened down here is um, that task, that work workflow task is declared as done. So it doesn't block at that point. Um, where, when I where, where do I want to take all of this? Um, I think that one of the first things is, is really to implement this uh, workflow job type. Um, uh, it raises a little bit the question of how to manage then active workflows. Uh, Probably, um, uh, I mean, I had some good conversation with Koske. Um, adding this to the Jenkins user interface um, should be uh, straightforward. Uh, one could also use the activity uh, web UI in addition. Uh, of course, that would require to have another um, a Tomcat uh, instance running, which is not that great. Um, I would like the... Uh, the workflow diagrams, I mean, that's, that's a fairly low-hanging fruit to have the workflow diagrams showing up in the Jenkins itself. The workflow engine uh, has an API where I can get the PNG file from, so that, that would be nice. Um, an additional um, enhancement would be to even show um, uh, the live state as the workflow uh, executes. One can see which tasks are completed, which are still active, and so forth. Um, yeah, the activity web UI, if, if I can integrate this somehow even into Jenkins, I mean, uh, that could be, uh, it's, it's possible. Uh, I, I don't think that activity modeler, modeler I will ever use because it's no longer under active development. And then little things like the uh, uh, job parameter um, should be supported. Keep in mind, a, a workflow um, has also uh, carries um, variables with it. I mean, the workflow context uh, is essentially just a bunch of variables uh, which a script task or the um, Jenkins task then can access and um, uh, stuff values from these into uh, a job uh, when a job gets started. 
And I can see also uh, more task types uh, um, to be added, uh, things like for uh, slave management um, or build promotion, uh, so that in the workflow, uh, the workflow author would have then the ability to um, uh, say, oh, well, if this uh, job finished, then I want, and, and that user task uh, said success, then maybe I want to promote the build result, things like that. Uh, in uh, work in, in um, activity workflows, there's the notion of multi-instance uh, for a task, which means um, one box then represents multiple uh, instances in, in, in parallel or in, in, in sequence. Um, getting this together with Jenkins is probably an interesting thing because it allows to have um, entire um, sets of jobs uh, defined with one box, so to speak, graphically. I, I want to find a, an alternative to have the entire Eclipse update site bundled with the, the, the Jenko plugin. Uh, it, the, the Jenko plugin at the moment is quite big. Um, I think it's 20 megabyte or so. Um, the reason I, it's bundled at the moment is um, I had to do um, an, a patch to the activity designer in order to accept um, extensions in, in that dynamic way as I needed. And um, the um, activity designer owner, um, his name is um, Thais Ratemaker, um, he's kind of responsive to, my, uh, 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 to, to me sending him a patch. Uh, he has accepted the patch, and once he releases, I think I no longer need this approach, because then um, the uh, activity designer can be found externally. And... Um, also, I'm looking into uh, maybe alternative ways to expose the workflow repository itself instead of using Git, which has its beauty, but given um, uh, in Eclipse I use eGit, um, the, uh, the steps to push something is a little bit tedious at the moment, um, so I can see they're also using a, uh, other approaches. So, um, what, what, what I... What I think uh, the, 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 the important things one can take away from uh, my presentation here is if you have a complex um, uh, job orchestration need, um, take a look into the Jenko plugin, give it a try. Um, if you uh, are interested in how the Git server plugin works, uh, I think the source code here is a pretty good example. It's relatively easy to use uh, the Git server plugin. Similar to the Eclipse update sites plugin, um, I think it's a pretty good uh, example uh, how to use this. Um, also from a build perspective, from a plugin build perspective, uh, the Jenko plugin is interesting because it's a combination of Maven and Taiko. I don't know to which extent you guys are familiar with Taiko. It's been used to build Eclipse artifacts, um, Eclipse plugins and so forth. And integrating this with a Jenkins um, uh, build into one Maven um, um, multi-module build. It took me a little bit uh, to get this working. Uh, probably a good example. Okay, are there questions? So the question is, how can I have uh, multiple parallel jobs? Uh, you just put them in parallel, as many as you like, graphically. I mean, the, the example um, I showed was just two, but um, you can have as many as you want to draw there. There's no restriction in, within BPMN. So is this a conditional job? Is it Okay, so the question is, how is the condition evaluated? Uh, so the way this works is um, a BPMN task completes, and then um, let's say the, the, um, the Jenkins job, uh, its build result is being reflected in the workflow context. The workflow context is essentially a set of variables. The next, the, the, the gate, after that, can inspect that and can say, oh, um, job X, uh, success, okay, that route. Right? So that's how that evaluation works. 
Thank you.